While remaining on a purlin, the sawyer reaches out with the chainsaw and makes a back cut towards the fire. Once the back cut is complete and the outside rafter is located, change direction of the chainsaw and roll as many rafters as needed to achieve the desired head cut length. Once the desired head cut length is achieved, the sawyer makes their way back to the beginning of their head cut on the fire side while remaining on the purlin. Once the beginning of the head cut is reached, make a down cut parallel to the inside of the rafter back towards the purlin. Beginning the bottom cut parallel to the purlin, roll one rafter, stop at the second. Make a down cut parallel to the inside to the second rafter to complete the cut. Begin the next down cut on the opposite side of the rafter of the completed hole. Continue completing center rafter louvers from the purlin until the end of the head cut has been reached. While remaining on a purlin, Sawyer 1 reaches out with the chainsaw and makes a back cut towards the fire. Once the back cut is complete and the outside rafter is located, Sawyer 1 changes direction of the chainsaw and rolls as many rafters as needed to achieve the desired head cut length. At the beginning of the head cut on the fire side, Sawyer 2 makes a down cut parallel to the inside of the rafter back towards the purlin. Sawyer 2 begins the bottom cut parallel to the purlin, rolling one rafter and stopping at the second. Sawyer 2 makes a down cut parallel to the inside of the second rafter to complete the cut. Sawyer 2 begins the next down cut on the other side of the rafter of the completed hole. Sawyer 2 continues completing center rafter louvers from the purlin until the end of the head cut has been reached. While remaining on the main beam, the sawyer reaches out over the rafter, which is two feet away, with the chainsaw and makes a back cut towards the fire. Once the back cut is complete and the outside purlin is located, change directions of the chainsaw and cut parallel to the main beam while reaching out over the rafter. Stop the head cut once you have reached the other purlin, which is eight feet away. While remaining on the main beam, walk back towards the purlin on the fire side at which the cut was started. Reaching to the beginning of the head cut, Cut parallel to the inside of the purlin back to the main beam. Cut parallel along the main beam from the purlin on the fire side across to the other purlin eight feet away towards the ladder being used for egress. Reach out cutting parallel to the inside of the purlin to complete the cut. Louver the panel by pushing down on the side closest to the main beam and pulling up from the side opposite of the main beam.
While remaining on the main beam, Sawyer 1 reaches out over the rafter, which is two feet away, with the chainsaw and makes a back cut towards the fire. Once the back cut is complete and the outside purlin is located, Sawyer 1 changes direction of the chainsaw and cuts parallel to the main beam while reaching out over the rafter. Sawyer 1 continues to roll purlins towards the ladder being used for egress until the desired length of the head cut is achieved. Sawyer 2 reaches out to the beginning of the head cut and cuts parallel to the inside of the purlin back to the main beam. Sawyer 2 cuts parallel along the main beam from the purlin on the fire side across to the other purlin eight feet away towards the ladder being used for egress. Sawyer 2 reaches out cutting parallel to the inside of the purlin to complete the cut. Sawyer 2 moves over to the other side of the purlin they just completed the down cut on and starts the sequence over until the end of the head cut is reached. Panels are louvered by pushing down the side closest to the main beam and pulling up from the side opposite of the main beam. While remaining on the purl and on the fire side, Sawyer 1 makes a back cut and locates the rafter. Once the rafter is located, Sawyer 1 reaches out approximately 4 feet and cuts parallel to the inside of the rafter back to the purl that they are standing on. Sawyer 2 will do a mirror image of what Sawyer 1 is doing for the duration of the cut sequence. Sawyer 1 and 2 cut parallel to the inside of the purl that they are standing on, rolling one rafter and stopping at the second. Once the second rafter is stopped at, both Sawyer 1 and 2 will cut parallel to the inside of the rafter to complete the cut. Sawyer 1 and 2 will begin a new head cut on the other side of the rafter of the completed hole and begin the cut sequence again until the desired number of holes are cut. Panels may be louvered working off of a purlin by pushing down on one side of the louver and pulling up on the opposite side. Sawyer 1, operating on the purlin on the fire side, reaches out approximately 4 feet and cuts back to the purlin that they are standing on. Sawyer 2 will do a mirror image of what Sawyer 1 is doing for the duration of the cut sequence. Sawyer 1 and 2 cut a triangle utilizing their head cut big enough to fit the spikes of a trash hook through. Beginning at their head cut, both Sawyer 1 and Sawyer 2 will cut completely through the non-structural rafters while both Sounder 1 and Sounder 2 pull back with their trash hooks. Sawyer 1 and Sawyer 2 cut through one rafter and stop at the second. The natural break in pieces of OSB and plywood will allow the sounders to fold the panel back. Sawyer 1 and 2 cut through one rafter and stop at the second. The natural break in pieces of OSB or plywood will allow the sounder to fold the panel back. Once the panel is folded back, the roofing material can be ripped off or cut and the panel is pushed off to the fire side. Once the first panel is removed, it is not necessary to cut triangles for the trash hooks. Sounder 1 and Sounder 2 grab onto the exposed rafter with their trash hooks while Sawyer 1 and Sawyer 2 cut through two rafters until the panel is removed by the sounders. The roof crew repeats the steps until the desired size hole is achieved.
Sawyer 1, operating on the purlin on the fire side, reaches out approximately 4 feet and cuts back to the purlin that they are standing on. Sawyer 2 will do a mirror image of what Sawyer 1 is doing for the duration of the cut sequence. Sawyer 1 and 2 move together, cutting completely through the non-structural rafters. As the Sawyers begin to cut through the rafters, panels will drop into the structure. Sawyers 1 and 2 will continue to cut through rafters until the size hole desired is achieved.